Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Mrs. Steiner Reads. I'm Mrs. Steiner and I'm really glad you tuned in today to read another story with me. Now today I have found myself deep in the midst of the non-fiction section. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Mrs. Steiner, the non-fiction section, there aren't a lot of storybooks in the non-fiction section. Because what is non-fiction? Well, fiction means make-believe or fake. So non-fiction means not fake. It means real. So am I going to read a book today about a real car? Nope. Am I going to read a book today about a real dinosaur? Nope. Am I going to read a history book? No. Am I going to read a book about mm, tigers or lions? No, I'm not. I have had a ton of requests to read a book about math. Because we have lots of subjects in school. We do a lot of reading in school, but we also do a lot of math. And so there are some math teachers out there saying, Mrs. Steiner, why can't you do a book about math? So today I am. So here I am in the midst of the nonfiction section, right in the math section. So there are math books that are story books. Who even knew? Well, you know now because here they are. They're in the 500s. And I've got lots of them. I've got math fables. I've got math on beyond a million, another story. I've got how much is a million. Oh, have you seen how much is a million? Oh, look at this, look at this. You might recognize this illustrator. Do you remember this illustrator? This is a Stephen Kellogg book. I know right away because you can tell. You can tell by his artwork that this is a Stephen Kellogg book. Now he didn't write it. David Schwartz wrote it. It's about math. It's called How Much is a Million? Well, I've read this book and short, short version of the story, millions a lot. But you can also find that book in the math section. Now there's tons of math books here, but I had to pick one. Oh, it was almost as hard as picking a regular fiction book because there are some great math stories. Go to your library to the 500 section and check them out. But you won't have to check this one out because Mrs. Steiner is going to read today The Monster Who Did My Math. Woo, that would be nice, wouldn't it? If you had a monster that did your math. Maybe not. Let's read. Okay, this book is written by Danny Schnitzlein. I hope I'm saying that right because that's kind of a hard last name. And it is illustrated by Bill Mayer. Now, this book you would think would go in the easy readers, but it does not. It goes in the math section in the 513s. That's in the nonfiction section. So instead of starting with an E for easy or FIC when you go to your fiction books, it's going to start with a number. It's going to be in the nonfiction section. The Monster Who Did My Math. Okay, I've got to tell you something about this book before we start. It rhymes. I love books that rhyme. So you're going to love this one too, I promise. There once was a time I was frightened by numbers. They scared me at school and they haunted my slumbers. My brain had some kind of allergic reaction to multiplication, addition, and subtraction. My blood would run cold at the thought of division and decimal points would put spots in my vision. But now I see math from a new point of view. This is my story. I swear, it's all true. It was late on a Sunday and long past my bath. I'd waited all weekend to work on my math. I opened the book and my hands started shaking. My forehead was sweating. My stomach was aching. My vision went blurry. I wanted to run. If only I cried, all this homework were done. The clock chimed a warning with 12 hollow tones. My spine began tingling. A chill froze my bones. Outside in the yard, lightning flashed with a boom and a picture took shape in my shadowy room. His horns were bright red and his cape midnight black and his pencil-y fingers tapped clickety-clack. Boo-hoo, growled the monster. I'm feeling your pain. This awful arithmetic's draining your brain. Say hasta luego to multiplication. Forget your subtraction. Go take a vacation. It's fast and it's painless and all guaranteed. Just sign on the line and you'll get what you need. I signed as he sharpened his fingers and thumbs. He added the add-ins and figured their sums. He gave me my copy and raised one eyebrow. Pay later, he asked, or settle up now? Later, I answered. He laughed long and deep. 
In a flash, he was gone, and I went right to sleep. At school Monday morning, my homework was praised. The answers were perfect. My teacher amazed. My problems were solved in more ways than one, and no one but me could say how it was done. I looked at my homework that night, tons of graphing. I called for the monster. He couldn't stop laughing. You kids of today are pathetic and lazy. Your minds are all mushy. Your morals are hazy. He graphed all the points, then he figured my bill. I'll pay later, I said. And he growled, yes, you will. The teacher looked over my work the next day. I couldn't believe it. She gave me an A. But then Miss Markov said, come to the board. She wrote an equation. My temperature soared. My guts did a skydive. My knobby knees knocked. My classmates were giggling. The clock ticked and talked. I prayed I might vanish like some kind of ghost. The teacher was fuming. My hiney was toast. I called that old creep when I got home from school. You burned me, I told him. I felt like a fool. He rolled out my contract and showed the fine print. Look here, said the monster. You might need to squint. In paragraph seven of clause 93, if you don't learn anything, do not blame me. My blood began boiling. My cheeks turned bright red. Hit the road, take a hike. Don't come back here, I said. I'll go, snarled the monster. There's just one more thing. Your bill comes to $64. Cha-ching! I busted my bank and he snatched up my money. He counted and snickered. I asked, what's so funny? Your total is lacking by two fifty-two. Your math needs improvement, but what else is new? I tore up my room in the quest for more cash. Three pennies plinked out when I dumped out the trash. Down deep in my dresser, I dug out a buck. Two quarters turned up in a shoebox. What luck. I did some addition and added the stuff. Only 153. It wasn't enough. How much would I need to complete the transaction? I picked up my pencil and did some subtraction. From 252, I took 153. Just 99 cents and I'd finally be free. Way down in the hamper, eight nickels were shining. I fished out six dimes for my winter coat lining. My change came to 40 plus 60 cents more. My heart thumped and jumped as I totaled the score. All the money was there with a penny to spare. I cheered and did cartwheels. I jumped in the air. He flipped me a penny and shredded my bill. He left snarling, call me. You know that you will. My homework that night was on decimal places. I opened the book and made horrible faces. I pulled out some paper and worked problem one with the hint of a grin. Could it be done? Was this fun? As I worked problem two, I started to think. For the very first time, maybe math doesn't stink. Then deep in the shadows, I sensed someone lurking. I knew who it was, so I kept right on working. You need me, he bellowed, he thundered and roared, but the louder he got, well, the more I ignored. And while I was carefully writing and thinking, I couldn't believe it. The monster was shrinking. The more I kept working, the smaller he got till he shrank to the size of a wee little dot. I glanced at the guy, just a minuscule speck. Then I looked at my homework and said, what the heck? I scooped him right up. I can still see his face. And I dropped him right down in a decimal points place. The point in the middle of 7.9. I smooshed him down flat and he stuck there just fine. I finished my homework and climbed into bed, remembering something the monster had said. If you don't pay up front, you'll pay later instead. And though that old monster was far from a friend, and his service is one that I can't recommend, he did make a very good point in the end. Did you catch that funny part at the end? He did make a very good point, because he made a decimal point, but he also made a point, like he had a good point. He taught him a lesson. Okay, now real quick, let's talk about that lesson. That wasn't really a book that at the end I went, aw. That was a book that at the end I kind of went, Phew. That monster was kind of scary, okay? But let's talk about what the monster represented, because there's not a monster that's gonna do your math, but sometimes, you have problems with your math or any other subject and you think to yourself, well, 
it wouldn't really hurt if maybe someone did my homework for me, like my big sister or my big brother, or even my mom and dad. It won't matter. Teacher will never know. Or maybe you sit by somebody that's really smart and you think, well, it wouldn't really hurt that much if I just maybe looked at their paper. And that's kind of what the monster represented, someone else doing your homework. But then you'll pay later. Now he really did have to pay in the book and he really did have to scrape up money from every inch of his house. But the part where you pay later was when he had to stand up in front of the class. When Monster had done his homework for him or someone else, or you looked at your um, friend's paper, and then what did you learn? You didn't learn anything. So when teacher calls you to the front of the class, or when you have to take a test and they put up the little test dividers and there's no one to look at or do your work, you're sunk, aren't you? So this book taught us a very good lesson. Always do your work. And I love that once he did his work, he kind of figured out, hey, wait a minute. I don't need somebody to do my work for me. I don't need to look at that smart girl next to me or that smart guy next to me because turns out I'm a math genius. And that's the point of the story. Point. The point of the story is you can do it. And I know you can. Sometimes you have trouble. And if you have trouble, ask your teacher, ask a friend to help, but don't copy and don't have someone do your work for you. So I hope you loved this story. I really did. I loved visiting the nonfiction section. Look at us. We're not even reading an easy reader today. We got we got a whole new look at a whole new section, and I had a great time. Okay, now don't forget a few things I need you to do. I need you to like my video. I need you to hit the bell if you want notifications of future videos. I need you to subscribe to my channel. And I would also love it if you would follow me on Twitter at Mrs. Steiner Reads and like me on Facebook at Mrs. Steiner Reads. Don't forget to leave me comments of books that you want to see in the future. And I hope you're having a great school year. And I hope that you're studying hard and doing your own work. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, guys.